my goodness, we're live. I'm so excited. This is the most exciting follow-up to General Conference. I am absolutely giddy to be here with everyone. Thank you for, for joining already. We already have wonderful people joining. Thank you. I'm so excited. We, Elaine and I have just had a chance to talk this morning about General Conference and how absolutely incredible it was. And this idea of hastening the work and Temple Covenants and Section 109. We're, we're going to come back to this, but I we are on we are on cloud nine right now, and I'm sure we all are too. Thank you for all these hearts and loves. Good morning, everyone. It's just so great to be with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. I'd love to hear where you're joining from as well. Of course, we always like to hear that, and we are ready to put put everyone to work this morning. So. So let's get to work. Let's start talking. Let's make some plans for the next six months. I'm going to get get Elaine going on here with us. But oh, Guatemala. Wow, it's so great to see you again in Guatemala. It's just always fun to see that. Hello, Sharon Myler in Cancun. So fun. Wow. All of you wonderful people, all these places. Chandler, Arizona. Good morning, Callie. So good to see you. Meridian, Idaho. Salt Lake City at work. I hope this is all okay. Sacramento. Uh, we have, again, Cottonwood Heights, Blanding, Utah, Alberta, Canada, Glenwood, Lubbock, Texas, Oxford. Wow, Oregon is where I'm from. Thank you for joining us in Oregon. Argentina, wow. Gilbert, Arizona, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Spokane, Washington, Curitiba, Brazil. Oh, hi, Barbara. It's so good to see you. Go to Curitiba. We are so excited to hear about Florianopolis this weekend. So fun. Utah, Pleasant Grove, San Diego, Driving to Arkansas for the solar eclipse. That's so fun. Nebraska. I'm just going to keep reading these for a moment as we continue to join these. This is, this is amazing. Our spring break. We just had spring break and we had bookends on both sides. Hiram, Utah. And we took our girls to every temple in Utah over spring break, except for we missed Monticello and we Vernal because we've already been to Vernal, but every other temple we've hit. Allie and Jane, Allie has a, had, had an assignment to know all 29 counties in Utah. So we just thought, what the heck? We'll go visit all the temples and we'll memorize all the counties while we're at it. So we had a great spring break listening to General Conference. So this is so fun. Uh, we have Sharon Myler, two others request to be in your video. I have to see this view request. Oh, Elaine. across the street, Lita Alger. It's so good to be with you. Red Bluff, California, Highland, Utah. We're getting so many people from everywhere joining us. Elaine, are you joining? There you are, Elaine. Hello, our friend. Hello. It was me requesting. <laughs> you know, it had like three names there. I'm not sure why it was doing that. Hello, my friend. Good morning. <laughs> Elaine, I... I I just was telling them as we're getting everybody's saying where they're viewing from and we are from all over the world, Las Vegas, California, we have Guatemala, we have Argentina. We, I mean, we have Europe, we have, we have Canada, we have all over the United States. So, so welcome everyone. I mean, Elaine, look how beautiful you look too, Elaine. The conference just brings a light to your, <laughs> light to your eyes, beautiful hair. <laughs> Dear friend. Good morning, Elaine. <clears throat> Elaine, can you hear me okay on that side? It seems like it might be a little I, bit fuzzy. Yeah, I can now. Can you hear me? I can hear you great. Okay. Great. Yes. Okay, we're set okay. then. Okay. Okay. We have so much. I mean, Barbara um, <laughs> talks fast. She talks I know. It's, it's, it is. It is. She, everybody, but this is going to be, she's going to have to talk faster because we've got <laughs> so much to talk about. We we have so much to talk about. It's it's ridiculous, Elaine. I mean, we have people already starting. I I want to throw this out to you. Maybe a couple of administrative things. And Elaine, you correct me if I say anything stupid or wrong. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, we're going to be doing what we did last time, and we have our wonderful friend Lori Grace, who is just going to do a free PDF, wide margin lines, whatever you want to do. So we're putting it on my Instagram site, and if we can figure out Elaine's, we always want to do it on both. But somehow we're not smart enough. To <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just our lives are too crazy, but she's going to do that. And we're going to post it online so that you can print those off. They'll be numbered just like we have before. And if you want them printed, we are all going to have, I think we're going to try to have BYU print some for anybody who wants to do it that and you'll just pay the price of printing for them. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do with that yet, but the free PDF 
will just be right on your computer. You can just download it. So that's the that's going to be the first one. I think you know conference talks usually come what about Wednesday, and then and then dear Lori, who's just doing this out of the kindness of her heart, is going to make them look beautiful for us. And she's going to remind us of doctrines and principles and invitations and promised blessings on there so that you can study with that, with those margins. And then also a reminder for anyone who would like to join us on April 13th, right Elaine? In Lehigh, we're doing our gathering and we're gonna be talking about the do part of these talks and President Nelson and President Hall, everyone, all these talks. And so, and setting some goals for the next six months and section 109 of the Doctrine and Covenants that we're going to study together carefully, wisely, as we're incorporating all these general conference talks. Somebody, a few of you are asking, is it in person only? Um, you know, in the past, we have done, we have done a Zoom for those who have, who have wanted to. So uh, I will talk to, to Dustin, the husband, and see if we can figure out, <laughs> see if we can figure out how to do it by Zoom again, and see if we can make that work. So we, we, we want everyone to be able to join. We recognize everyone's coming from all over the world. And so I, I will take that on myself to ask him after this meeting and we will, I'll put it on our story. How's that? I'll put it on the story to let you know if we're doing a Zoom. Maybe we should count on it as I'm seeing a lot of people saying Zoom would be awesome and how do we find out about attending? If you want to attend the gathering, it's on my, it's on my Instagram page. And it just is, a, there's a little circle that I call them highlight circles all these things that we've learned this year. And if you go to that little highlight circle, you can click on the link and the link will give you the registration. And it's in Lehigh, it's on April 13th. Okay, was that enough administration, Elaine? Oh, that, that's perfect. I have to just, I just have to preface everything with a couple of things. I hope you did listen to conference looking for doc, doctrines, principles and applications, but also invitations, we have a lot of invitations but here's the deal it just occurred to me this morning that we may some of us some of you even me might get overwhelmed with all of the the invitations that we've been given and just think i i'm I, i'm not even close i can't do this but i i just want to tell you by small and simple means great things are brought to pass and the secret of all of this is going to be consistency Yes. just daily consistent steps forward we don't have to push ourselves faster than we need to go but we need to just be totally consistent and it's it's the principle of the aggregation of marginal gains where you just start little tiny things but they add up to big things in the end and i think if we can just be consistent and do things together and motivate one another we can create miracles within our circle of, of sisters so i'm i'm really excited about all the invitations and the promised blessings that we have and i couldn't help but sit there and think in general conference about the scripture in daniel and in doctrine and covenant 65 where there's a stone cut out of the mountain and it's without hands and it's just rolling forward uh, uh, sitting in the conference center with all of all of the saints there it just felt like we are a part of of miracles right right in our very the, there are miracles in our very midst and uh right before our eyes so i think this is going to be a great season barb oh. i'm i'm really thrilled El elaine and i i know this is all of you that are on here with us i am so beyond giddy about the next six months and talking about temple and talking about covenants and priesthood power and and talking about you know the, i mean i can't even talk president holland at the, right at the beginning i mean what did he say elaine this is an urgent matter this is an urgent matter and and that was that just went all the way through my my soul i'm sure it did you too oh. this is an urgent matter and then, you know, I, so for all of you, I, I'm a little bit weird on this. I couldn't, I mean, all of us are a little bit weird on this. Otherwise we wouldn't be on this, right? I mean, we're all in this together, but I, I, I just have to share it. Last night, I, I actually had to go back and I actually started transcribing the talks. I just, I just wanted them with me. So I transcribed Elder Holland's and President Nelson's and a, and a couple of others, to be honest, just because I, it was just, it was just in my heart that I had to have the right words. I just have to share this with, with from President Nelson. I mean, President Holland, first of all, you know, Elaine, you mentioned this this morning too, but his tender 
and powerful description of his wife. I, I, I'm just going to share this. I mean, I would play the video, but since we can't, I'm just going to read this. He says, I've learned some lessons recently that with the Lord's help, I wish to share with you today. This no doubt will make this a very personal talk. The most personal and painful of all has been the passing of my beloved wife, Pat. She was the greatest woman I have ever known. She was the most perfect woman I have ever known. Her purity, her gift of expression, her spiritual spirituality. And then he mentions this talk that we were going that we're going to add, Elaine, if that's okay, to our to our talks listen to. She gave the talk entitled Fulfilling the Measure of Your Creation. I love that talk. I'm so excited to study that with everyone. And then she says, it seems to me that she fulfilled the measure for creation more successfully than anyone could have dreamed possible. She was complete. She was a complete daughter of God, an exemplary woman of Christ. I was the most fortunate of men to spend 60 years of my life with her. Should I prove worthy? Our ceiling means I can spend eternity with her. I also love this focus on choices. Should I prove worthy? Our ceiling means I could spend eternity with her. I mean, just so beautiful. And then Elaine, I'm just gonna read this one part and then I'm gonna spend, give it to you. This is the next part. He says, another experience began 48, years af 48 hours after my wife's burial. At that time, I was rushed to the hospital in an acute medical crisis. I then spent the first four weeks of a six week stay in, an out, in and out of intensive care and in and out of consciousness. Virtually all experiences during that first period is lost to my memory. What is not lost, and here we go. What is not lost is my memory of the journey outside of the hospital, out of what seemed the edge of eternity. I cannot speak fully of that experience here, but I can say that part of what I received was an admonition to return to my ministry with more urgency, more consecration, more focus on the Savior, more faith in his word. I couldn't help but, I couldn't help but feel I was receiving my own personal version of a revelation given to the, to the 12 nearly 200 years ago. And then he just talks about raising that, raising that cross and walking. I, I mean, I, I could go, we, I know we could go on and on and on and on and on, but, but wow, when he starts talking about angels being among us and the ministry of angels, and we have to believe in angels and speak of angels. I mean, can I just say one more thing? Okay, here we go. I, I can't stop that. I'm, I'm, I really am going to be quiet, Elaine. No, you don't. Fortunately, you don't have, to be, you don't have okay, to be. but I wonderful. am, I promise. <laughs> I just love this. Oh, but, but, he says, uh, I'll, just, but, I'll just insert here. He did give a talk on angels that, that, that just go read that if you don't have anything else to do today. <laughs> yeah. If you have nothing else to do, it is a great talk on angels, by the way. Okay. So he says, fortunately, we have help for this task. Lots of help. We need to believe in angels and miracles and the promises of the Holy Priesthood. We need to believe in the gift of the Holy Ghost, the influence of good family and friends and the power of the pure love of Christ. We need to believe in Revelation and Prophets, Sears and Revelators, and President Russell M. Nelson. We need to believe in prayer and pleading and personal righteousness. We really can ascend to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly place, the holiest of all. Anyway, we could go on and on, but wow. Wow, Elaine. Okay. Wow, everyone. Okay, goodbye. We're done. Th that's the message <laughs> right there. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, Sister Holland's talk was given at BYU yes. Women's Conference, and I believe it's called Fulfilling the Measure of Your Creation for those of you who are asking. But did you just hear what Barbara repeated? Uh, and, and that scripture is in Hebrews, the, the, the city of the living God. I don't remember ever reading that. Isn't that crazy? Crazy. They mentioned the book of Hebrews a few times in this general conference talk. They were, I mean, general conference. It, that, there's so much to study right now. So much to consistently small line upon line study throughout the next six months. Yeah, yeah. I think I, the next time you feel the urge to to get on social media, maybe just open your scriptures. Make yourself open your scriptures first or something. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm determined to do it. And I'm determined to do it with you. And Barb, we're just so grateful for you and your excitement, but also your knowledge. Well, so this is, it's going to be fabulous. I, um, I guess maybe I, I want to just jump really fast to President Nelson's talk. Let's, because let's. 
uh, I felt like, I don't know, you, everyone, you can write down, send what you thought that there, if there was a major theme or something that you just kept, it just kept coming that you felt like we all needed to hear. I, I kept hearing covenants, just covenants everywhere. I kept yes. hearing the temple everywhere, everywhere. And I'm, I just want to read the, the promises President Nelson gave if we worship in the temple. Oh, okay. And um, somehow we've all, all got to, he said, well, he says this, here's my promise. Nothing will help you more to hold fast to the iron rod than worshiping in the temple as regularly as your circumstances permit. I love that he put that there because we can't, we can't just go, I mean, we can't just go all out. We've got, we've got to be measured yes. and calculating and intentional about all of this. Nothing will protect you more as you encounter the world's mists of darkness. Interesting, right? After studying the Lehi's dream, nothing will bolster your testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and his atonement or help you understand God's magnificent plan more nothing will soothe your spirit more than during during times of pain nothing will open the heavens more nothing the temple is the gateway to the greatest blessing god has for each of us Woo. and i can just testify that president nelson has been riveted on that because when i was general young women president and and he was my priesthood advisor here's what he said and it was so clear and and we were we were all on the same page the temple is the reason for everything we do in the church and i think he's repeated that several times why would that be the case people may say well where's the savior in all of this the savior is right there the temple gives us access to our to the savior that that is his house so anyway he's said the savior is the heart of the temple so when we're trying to get people to the temple that's exactly what he's saying we're bringing people to christ through his home i mean i mean elaine you and i both know that we love inviting people to our home because we want them in our home we want them to feel the spirit of our home we want them to feel the savior and we want them to feel of his love there we i i know i hope this is the case with with all of us but i I love having people in a place where I know that I have tried to do my best. It's not perfect. It's messy half the time. We have toys and kids and dogs, whatever else. But <laughs> it, is a, it is a consecrated, safe place for the gathering of Israel, my home, just like the temple. But Christ is the center of the temple. He's the center of my home, right? I mean, we want people, we want to bring people there. And the Lord wants us in his home, is where, where he can teach, where he can feel his love. I. I've said this a number of times and I think, I, I don't remember who gave this talk. Maybe it was Elder Bednar. I'm pretty sure it was Elder Bednar. But he said, he said um, that sometimes when you're in the temple, you feel, you feel homesick. And it's, and it's this, I, I feel this way. I feel like I have, I have come home, but at the same time, I feel that there's, there's this home away from home that I'm not quite able to connect with yet. And that's, the, the temple is God's home. And it's this reality of that there's something, it's like, it's, it's President Irony's talk that he just gave this last general conference where he talks about how he knew that he, it wasn't that place that he was at, but there was something just like it that he had left in the pre-mortal pre world. It's that kind of idea. It's just this familiar, to me, it's kind of a familiar homesickness, <laughs> but, but it's a beautiful homesickness. It's, it, it, it's, it's this desire to do better, to be, to come home. I just want to come home anyway. I uh, and, and everyone, I've been in Barbara's home, and it's so fun to go there because she's not uptight. Nothing has to be perfect. No. We went we went once for, to, for a talk with some other women and for lunch, and she just had a loaf of bread on the counter and said, here, fix your own sandwiches. Let's sit down and eat. <laughs> and it, just, it was not, a. I mean, it was just so relieving to just see that it wasn't a production. It wasn't about Barbara. It was just about being together. So we tend to make things a lot harder than they need to be don't we barb <laughs> yeah i'm a pretty simple person <laughs> it's true though we just want to be with each other we want to come into christ you know i mean that's what we really want so if we could create opportunities for that to happen some i know in my own life sometimes if i get too stressed about helping people come into christ i'm not helping them come into christ <laughs> so, true you know, you know i mean Remember that there was someone, I now I can't remember, but you'll help us here. Their stillness was mentioned. We have got to 
carve out a piece of time. And I think that's why we, we wanted to name this little discussion group uh, Walk With Him, because we need to have that quiet time when we are just still, we're listening to his voice, we're, we're praying, we're having, you know, an experience with the Holy Ghost, listening to conference talks, just a little bit of time for stillness. I think that will be so important in this next six months. And, and you know, Elaine, I one good, so it was Elder, there are a couple of talks on stillness, but the first one I remember hearing was Elder Bednar, which to me was so fantastic that he was the one that gave that talk because, you know, he's a, he's a go-getter. I mean, that man, he, he's, he's, I mean, how many people at BYU Idaho have seen him running up the stairs when he was a the president there at the, you know, and out in the field? And, and he's constantly just going and thinking, but he is, like you're saying, he's very intentional about it. And you, part of hastening the work is being still. I mean, that, it seems ironic, but that is, it's, it's, it's getting your, it's getting your appointment. It's getting your, you know, what is, what does Jacob say in second, in, uh, in Jacob chapter of what is that? Second Nephi? Where he said, he's, oh, his errand from the Lord, right? I mean, he's received his errand from the Lord. And that's part of hastening the work for me is making sure that we're, we're doing the will of the Lord. We hasten it as we are aligned with the prophet. If we're not taking time to be still, and I am guilty of this as, as anyone, but I can be all over the place on little shoots, right? I mean, I can just be, I can just be running all over the place. And it takes a goody lane to remind me, Barb, let's, you know, we're going to be focused here. We're going to be we're going to be focused. Yes. And to somebody's point, lemon, lavender, love and love. That was President Nelson recently inviting us just two weeks ago to not run faster than we have strength. Right. I mean, that's it's it's being aligned with the prophet, being aligned with the errand of the Lord for us in our own individual lives. But for me, in order to do that, to run fast, to hasten the work, I have to know what he wants me to do, which requires stillness. I mean, it's President, I'm just blasting, but it's President Uchtdorf telling us to slow down as we go over bumps instead of speed up, right? Slow down before you go over that bump. It's right. I have to, I have to make a confession. I texted Barb during general conference. I was there in the room and uh, I texted her I, and I said, uh, walk with him, something like that. And she texted back, no, run with him. <laughs> oh my God. I couldn't help it. That's how I was feeling. It was, you texted right in the middle of President Holland, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, or right after, run with him. we got to run with yeah, him. This is an urgent matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a celestial pace. Thank you, May Lundy. That's a great comment. I, I you know, back to Elder Bednar, I, I didn't ha take time to transcribe all these, but I do have in here, Be Still reminds us to focus on the Savior's unfailing, to say, to focus on the Savior unfailingly. I, I, that's be still reminds us to focus on the Savior unfailingly and then spiritual st spiritual stillness of the soul strengthens us to overcome hard things. I, I love that talk on, on stillness. Anyway, and I also loved I, these, these words in that talk, receive, review, remember, and renew. Oh, wow. Things to do in stillness. Isn't that powerful? Elder Bednar, receive, review, remember, and renew. And then he says, we are blessed to be able to be still anyway. And you know, they did have, by the way, Elaine, he used yours as well. I mean, not yours, but what you often quote is the virtue garnishing our thoughts unceasingly and returning to virtue. And then he also reminded us in being still to be grounded, rudest, established and settled. Like that. And I think that that's what we're trying to do here with this too, is by studying the doctrines and principles and applications, invitations and promised blessings, we are hoping and so many, Elder Bednar gave this, Elder, Elder um, Renlin gave this, it's, it's that idea of that house needing to be firmly attached to the bedrock, right? And that whole idea of making sure we are firmly grounded is, is what that really is. And, and boy, studying these doctrines and principles, how many times did we hear principles? I, I put on my Instagram account, what invitations have you received? I also wanted to put on there, what, what principles have you learned? Because that's what we're going to continue to talk about during this next six months. Principles associated with these talks that are given, principles associated with Doctrine and Covenant section 109, and I would add in there section 110, I think that's gonna be a critical combination there. But also, sometimes as we're studying this, what principles has the Spirit taught us as we are learning? That's one of the things that Elder Scott actually teaches us that is that we need to distill talks, and we need to distill stories and, and scriptures, and he says, he says, 
he says, it takes a lot of work, but we need to distill them into simple phrases of principle. So the principle is often not always just said, it's what we listen to and say, okay, if this, then this. And then that sentence becomes the principle. And you can find those all throughout these conference talks. Sometimes, like in this one by Elder Renlund, he actually says, let me teach you some specific principles. But often they don't say, let me teach you these principles. They just simply teach and teach and teach. And from that talk, we come up with principles that make sense and that are grounded and that are eternal. So doctrines are all, they, they are unchanging. They answer the question of why. They always lead to eternal life, right? What else do we have there for doctrines? That, that, that nails it. That really okay. does nail it. They, and, and just name, name the, the big ones, so the, the big ones. The big ones we talk about, this is really from Elder Bednar. We say this over and over again from his Increase in Learning book, but he has it in other places as well. The, the three main ones that we often talk about, and most things can really be distilled down to these three topics, three, three doctrines. The doctrine of the Godhead, the doctrine of the plan of salvation, and then the core central doctrine is the doctrine of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Then there are other doctrines that are associated, associated with that. Um, we can talk about the doctrine of the restoration, right? And there are others, but then we have principles. And, and for those of you who have heard this over and over again, I, I would almost apologize, but it's always good to remember and kind of go through this process mentally. So I often will do the doctrine is the trunk of the tree. And then the principles are kind of reaching out, but they're always attached to that tree. They're always attached to the doctrine. So principles also never change. A principle, if it's a principle of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's a true principle, will never change. It's always rooted and grounded in doctrine. So it has to be attached to that doctrine. I mean, I mean I'll give you an example. Elder, Elder <clears throat> talk. What a powerful, 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 powerful talk. And in that talk, it was so interesting because he was teaching pure doctrine. And he was talking, you remember that talk where he's talking about going down the road and having the police officers turn people around. And then he was talking about how God does not want to turn you around. He's going to keep you going, right? He's talking, I, by the way, I love where he talked about his confused mother-in-law, even though he's on the other, other <laughs> she's on the other side of the field. <laughs> that was so awesome. But, I, but the intent of the Father's plan is to get us to the other side. The intent of the Father's plan is to help us on the plan of salvation. The intent of his, the Heavenly Father's plan is the happiness right here, right now. But if we were just to take one part of that talk and say, okay, well, the intent of God's plan then is that we all just have eternal life then we have one, one part of, of the two sides of the coin. The other part is that Elder Kiran taught so well was that we have agency and choice. And so we have these two things. When we have agency and choice together, the Lord will work with us and continue to work with us and continue to work with us until we have eternal life. And he wants us to all have eternal life. But it's not that he's just giving eternal life to anyone. He's giving eternal life as we continue the process of becoming like him. So that was the beautiful part of both sides of that coin was critical to understanding a principle. So again, principles answer the question of what? They're always grounded and tied to pure doctrine. They, are, they never change and they're eternal and they're a framework for how we live our lives, yeah. right? So they and don't how we exercise how. our agency. Isn't that how to exercise our agency. Yeah. Okay. And often an invitation will follow a principle. So they'll teach the principles and you see this all through. Principles will be taught all the way. The leaders of the church have taught principles all through these talks. And then after teaching the doctrine and principles, then they'll all often follow up with an invitation. And then the invitation is typically based on the principle and the doctrine that they just taught in that, in that talk. And if not an invitation, then we can think about how we apply that individually in our lives. So the application, in, invitation, application, sometimes specific, sometimes very personal. I love that. Yeah, and Elaine, you know, but President Nelson, let's just, if we could, since I, since I transcribed this too, I don't know why I feel so geeky <laughs> saying this, but I am, a, I am a prophet geek, I guess. But, but you know what, I'm happy to be. So he, President Nelson gave us a few invitations. Elaine read the blessings. But if you listen to the invitation, it's a prophetic invitation, prophetic priority invitation. And then to Elaine's point, the invitation is given to all of us on a general level. And then we decide, that's the application part. It changes by person. We decide how we're going to apply that in our lives. So one very obvious invitation that I, that I, I love, especially for what we're doing here, is President Nelson simply said, 
we have rejoiced in each and every general conference since, since then, including this one. So he's talking about how he and President Oaks were both called 40 years ago to the day, April 7th, 1984. And then he says, we have once again been blessed with the sacred outpouring of the spirit and then says, I hope you will repeatedly study the messages of this conference throughout the coming months. So right off the bat, beginning of his talk, he gives his first invitation. Please study these general conference talks. Note that he doesn't say how to study them. He doesn't say what day to study them. He doesn't say what time to study them. He doesn't say exactly what to do. He's just simply inviting us to study these talks. So Elaine, what do you, what do you make from that? Well, I, you know, I, I, I think more than ever before, it's, it's going to be very critical for us to be familiar with the words of prophets, seers, and revelators. And I'll never forget a meeting that we had with the first presidency where President Eyring said, in the coming days, the youth are going to need to be riveted on the words of prophets, seers, and revelators. And that's what changed the youth curriculum. That's when the Come Follow Me really began because it was very clear that we already had lessons ready they were written, they were translated, they were correlated, and it was the words of prophets, seers, and revelators. So, so that was a major, major change and shift. And I think more than, I, th I think President, well, President Nelson was in on that. He knows, he knows. Absolutely. And so, yeah, I, yeah, it, it's, it's time, it's time it's to time. really pay attention. Hey, Elaine, I have to throw this out here just again, this is administrative. This is me being aligned with the prophet and the church function administration. I, I want to be careful. I transcribed the talks, but these are not official transcriptions. I, I have to say this very, very carefully in case anybody wants it. Or I just saw somebody saying, I, maybe I'll do this for so and so. If I do a transcription, it is only for me. And I, we can read it here just because because the talks are live and you can actually go to the to the vocal talk the audio talk but until th this is something i teach in my living prophets class all the time until the talks have officially come out from the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints having been correlated by the church officially and having the stamp of approval from the prophet these are not official talks so what i what i have done in trans and transcribing it is just simply for me for the conversation but this is not official until it comes from the church headquarters and you see the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints official stamp of approval symbol of jesus christ on there i just wanted to make sure that that is very very clear to everyone because what i'm doing is is simply to help in the conversation but i will not publish this or doing anything with it until it comes out officially from the church just there's my little clarification well, <laughs> for all of you who care you and you, you know, again, just just talking about prophets. President Nelson's been preparing us all along the way. If you go back and and review all of his talks, every talk just seems to be building and building. He told us to get rid of the spiritual, uh, the debris in our lives. Yeah. Okay. He he talked about spiritual momentum. Elder Renlund reinforced that again about let's get the spiritual momentum going and uh, i just gave a talk about about that too about spiritual momentum and as i was pondering giving that talk it was interesting that the, the it, momentum i could feel was not speeding up to yeah. get the momentum but actually spiritual momentum may come by slowing down yes. by being still and 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 being consistent that consistent small small effort well, i mean Elaine, you know this better than anyone but i i will just throw this out there there is nothing like how do i how, how do i describe this there's nothing like having the lord hasten the work when you are tr this is i'll just give my own when i try to figure out something and i'm really working on it and i'm putting forth the effort as the lord has asked us to do what president nelson has said over and over again and I could continue to study and work on something, but then all of a sudden, or, or through, through, through a process of time, depending on how it is, the Lord through his spirit guides you into the right answer and it saves like a year of time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because you're still, and because you're studying the scriptures and because you're following the prophet or because you're attending the temple and you're spending time in the temple, the Lord speaks. And it, it's, it's a funny thing to say this, but in my life, slowing down and allowing the Lord to teach you, teach me, has saved me years. <laughs> like, 
that the I slowing totally down it. saves time. Oh, it's the most incredible thing. Oh yeah, I, I I totally get it, Barb. It's really true. You can if you can slow down and hear the voice of the spirit. You know, President Nelson, are you willing to do the spiritual work it's going to take to hear him? Yes. You know, he, he's prepared us. He's prepared us all the way along. I'm just uh, I'm just thrilled to be alive and on the earth at this point in time i kept getting that just this chill would come over me like i get to be involved in something as great and as grand as this i can't even believe it amen can't even believe it. hey elaine i i have to throw out a, a couple more things one somebody in here one time wrote to elaine and said that they would be willing to help with like writing down things that are here, helping us post some things. If you're on this, would you reach out back to Elaine and I so that we, so that we can use, use and abuse you? Because I've had a number of people requesting some of these great statements that you guys are saying and that you ladies and, and men are saying on here. We would love to have somebody help with some of that. So if there's somebody, I know somebody's already already offered to do that. So if you're on here, please re-offer. We would, we would love yeah. it for everyone's sake. But as we're studying section 109 and these prophets talks, we need to keep a record as much as we can. So if, if you can help on that, Elaine and I haven't quite figured out how to do that. We'd love your help. But also I want to share just a, I, I may have shared this, but I don't think so because it's a pretty sacred. When our girls, we were trying to decide about adopting our girls, we had just met them. And, and I, you know, Dustin knew immediately that we were going to adopt her. At the moment he's, he met them, little Jane reached up and grabbed his pinky and, and he knew, I mean, he knew he looked at me and tears were streaming down his down his face and he just said we found our girls I, I didn't know quite as fast it wasn't that i didn't want to i just didn't have that confirmation like he had had but we went to the tabernacle choir that night and it was sissel singing and i'll just say this i think i have shared this but sissel was singing and she sang the song slow down and it was as if i heard my own mother because those are the words that she said to me over and over again before she passed away barb all my life she'd say that to me barb you need to slow down barb you need to slow down you need to slow down. I've always heard that. So when I heard Sissel sing that, I knew. It was the strongest confirmation. The Lord was telling me I needed to slow down. And yes, these were my girls. And, and my mother was their grandmother. And Dustin's mother was their grandmother. And in all the craziness of life, I needed to slow down and spend some time getting to know my daughters. And then COVID set in. <laughs> it was the most amazing thing that the Lord just created a time to slow down it was it was just beautiful so i you know COVID for a lot of people was really hard and i get that i lost my father during COVID, and it was a hard time but the blessing of the lord putting us in situations at times to slow down has also been a major blessing in my life so thank you elder bednar for that great talk and others as well oh and 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 listen to sissel that that song is so beautiful is. so beautiful. It yes is. i i agree so barb then we've got DNC 109. Oh how, my goodness. Okay, okay, women, how are we going to do all this? Because DNC 109 is big. It is packed with things that we need to understand and know. And we probably need to spend, maybe we start out with DNC 109 next week. I don't know. What do you think? I, I think we, I think, well, I, I don't know. Maybe we let Lane and I continue to talk and you guys bring in some ideas and things as well. I, I, let me just throw out a couple of things for you on this talk. I mean, Kirtland Temple, Doctrine and Covenants section 109. So I, I teach the Doctrine and Covenants every year. I'll be teaching it again this summer with my students at BYU. And section 84, I mean, the ones that President Nelson has suggested over and over again, but section 84, section 107, and then you go to section 109, section 110 and here's the deal i'll just talk just briefly about this i won't bore everyone with all this history although it's not boring at all to me but you get the 109 and 110 we're talking the kirtland years right and so this is the kirtland temple these keys as president nelson said that established the gospel of jesus christ allowed for us to be able to make the temple covenants so section 84 the Lord tells us that th these keys were lost during the time of Moses, right? And then we learned that during the time of Christ, these keys were brought back at the Mount of Transfiguration. So Eli it's the same, Elijah, Elias, Moses came, Jesus Christ received these keys. He has these keys at Mount of Transfiguration. Then after the apostasy, we then lose all these keys again. And when Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery, but Joseph Smith specifically, receives these keys again, 
it as, as, the, as the church is being restored. And that's why the keys were received in 1829, because the church had to be restored after the keys are received. So the church is restored 1830, right? So that the, the administrative hierarchical function of the church has all been restored at that point. But what hasn't been restored, and this is what President Nelson is talking about, what hasn't been restored is the keys of the highest order of the Melchizedek priesthood. That's the patriarchal order. That's the, that's, the, that's the priesthood talking about the new and everlasting covenant. That's where we receive the fullness. And that's what comes in the Kirtland Temple. So in the Kirtland Temple, we receive the keys of the highest order of the Melchizedek priesthood or the patriarchal order, or we could go on and on. But that's when we receive then Elijah, Elias, and Moses. And they then return these keys, which allows for the temple and the, all the work that is done in the temple today to move forward. So it's all of the ceiling. That's why we needed to have the temple before we set Elder I, President Iron gives this great talk where he talks about how we have to have, this was a few years ago, but they had to receive these keys so that then they could send out the Quorum of the Twelve to go gather Israel. That's all tied into the Kirtland Temple. So for us, that Kirtland Temple period is so important. Then the Kirtland Temple, the, the, the saints are moved from the Kirtland Temple. They, they have to leave. It's the extermination order and everything. Then they move to Nauvoo. And that's where then the Lord says, you have to build the temple in Nauvoo so that this order of the priesthood, meaning the patriarchal order of the priesthood, could again be established on the earth. And so then they build the Nauvoo Temple. And that's where you get all the section. That's where you start getting baptism for the dead. And you get all of the ordinances, section 128, section 131, section 132, where you talk learning about sealing ordinances and sealing covenants. It all starts in section 84, really, with, with the Lord explaining the priesthood keys have been lost, and then we've got to build a temple. And he's calling this people to the Ohio. That's section 38. Mm -hmm. But that's way earlier. He's calling them to the Ohio in section 38. By the time we get to section 84, he's reminding us, he's telling us, we've lost these keys, build a temple. So section 95 build the temple, and then section 109, the temple is now built, the keys are being restored, and now we have the ability to do all the things that the Lord has established on his earth. It's the fullness of the gospel on the earth. I know that was a very long explanation. Thank you, everyone, for dealing with me talking. <laughs> but, oh, good. but that's why this section, section 109, is so important, because now the keys have been restored, and now we can have eternal families. Now we can gather Israel. Now we have the Abrahamic covenant. It's section 109. There's no way to have eternal family. There's no way to have eternal life. There's no way to have, think, there's no reason to think celestial if we don't have priesthood keys. So, so to your point in, in all of this, yes, 100%, we need to be studying section 109, not only because of priesthood keys, but because we have a prophet of God who, have, who has asked us to study this. And I'm sorry for everyone who I'm spitting on. When I get so excited, I start spitting and I recognize that it's coming at this, <laughs> at this camera. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when, I, when I was when I was a student in Nauvoo, I did this travel study in Nauvoo for a semester, and I had this professor. Uh, his name was Elder Elder ba Bateman or Brother Bateman, Doctor Bateman, and he <laughs> Backman. Sorry, Backman. He was so good, but I always sit on the front row. And when he got really excited. He'd hold his pants up with his pant buckle, and then he would he'd spit. And so in my notes, I have circles of. A brother Backman spit on different things that were important in Nauvoo. Anyway, <laughs> nobody needs to know that. But be grateful that this is this is an Instagram live and not face to face because you guys would all be drenched right now. Oh, you're so cute. You are so <laughs> cute. Pay attention. I mean, yeah, priesthood keys. We, ha I mean, we have to understand the keys. And uh, when he talked about that, I my mind went back to Denmark. We were in Denmark at one point, and there's a chapel there. I can't remember the name of it, but it has the original Torvalson uh, oh, yeah. Christus. <laughs> and then along the sides of the chapel are the 12, the, the original 12, big marble carvings of them. And in Peter's hand are a huge set of keys. And President Packer, I believe, gave a talk and told about being there with President Kimball and having President Kimball tell the caretaker in that of that beautiful little chapel, those keys are priesthood keys and I hold those now. And President Packer said that was one of the most sacred, impactful uh, times that he has ever been. But I, I remember standing in front of Peter with this big thing of keys and thinking, I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we have keys. Elaine, I can't agree more, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this story too. I was in, 
the Rome temple when it was being dedicated and at the visitor center. And I have this picture that I took of President Nelson and he has his hands in the Rome visitor center. They had those exact statues, right? And priests and Peter's holding those same keys. Oh. And I have a picture of President Nelson reaching his hand up and holding the keys. And then he says this, President Nelson says the same thing. Peter held the keys and then he said, I hold these keys. That is a huge statement to make in Rome, Italy. When you walk around, the keys are important. They're, they're, on, they're on the marble, they're on the cathedrals, they're everywhere. And President Nelson just grabbed, held onto those keys held by Peter. And he said, I hold these keys. It, it, is, it was such a powerful moment in the visitor center of the Rome, Italy temple, Elaine. Powerful. Oh, see, I didn't know. I didn't know that they have a replica of all of that. Yeah, there. let's That's go. Incredible. Let's go. Let's go walk in <laughs> Rome. Let's go. Let's go to Rome, Elaine. Let everybody come with us to Rome. Okay, here we go. This says um, the power. This is President Kim President Kimball. Wow, that just dated me. This is President Nelson. He says the power of these priesthood keys is infinite and breathtaking. Consider how your life. Now, this is another invitation. These invitations are so good. Consider how your life would be different if priesthood keys had not been restored to the earth. Then he says, without priesthood keys, you could not be endowed with power with the power of God. Without priesthood keys, the church could serve only as a significant teaching and humanitarian organization, but not much more. Isn't that the truth? Without priesthood keys, none of us would have access to the essential covenants and ordinances that bind us to our loved ones eternally and allow us to eventually live with God. Priesthood keys, and I love this statement, priesthood keys distinguish the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints from any other organization on the earth. Many other organizations can and do make your life better here in mortality, but no other organization can and will influence your life after death. Priesthood keys give us the authority to extend all of the blessings of Abraham to every covenant keeping man and woman. I mean, that's priesthood keys. I, I, I cannot, man, I, you guys know this. I, I, we can't, all of us, we can't emphasize this enough. I am so this is, this is not a shout out for my book, but I do have a, a, I think I have a chapter of my book where I talk about priesthood keys and I have a chart where I talk about the different priesthood keys that we use and when they come, who receive them, who holds them today and how they're used. There, there, are, there are over 40 different kinds of keys mentioned in the scriptures, 40. But the kind of keys that President Nelson is referring to are the keys, the priesthood keys of presiding. And these priesthood keys of presiding are absolutely the critical keys that allow for all of these blessings to happen. And then the other keys only had, the only people who have these priesthood keys are the first presidency and the quorum of the 12 apostles. These, the, the keys that are received in the Kirtland temple belong to, are, are held by 15 men in the church under the direction of the prophet, President Nelson. That's powerful. That's how important they are. Only 15 people have those keys. And they, but they bless the entire world, women and men, together for eternity. I mean, what a huge responsibility for these leaders of our church to be trusted by the Lord, to bless the lives of all of his children. I mean, Elder Kieran just got the, received these keys. I, I mean, you just think yeah. about what a life, like, wow, wow, wow. A big, big wow. Barb, and thank you for your study and your, your knowledge about this and helping all of us understand you know, uh, even even our little deacons hold keys, the key to the ministering of yes. angels. I yes. mean, it's incredible. I, I'll tell you a personal story. Uh, right after I was called to be the president of the young women, my husband was called to be a sealer in the Salt Lake Temple. And we went to President Monson's office immediately after that call. Yeah. And President Monson gave him the, 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 the power to seal on earth to be a sealer and it was because he held the keys and the prophet held the keys and then he delegates that power to to others but amazing amazing experience to be in the room and 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 feel and experience that amen yeah elaine on that same topic um helen was just asking she says her parents are divorced she doesn't want to necessarily be sealed to them I would strongly recommend that you go back and read these general conference talk. President Irene gave a great talk on sealing and being sealed to his family. And remember, God, <laughs> we have had this given to us a number of times. And President Irene has mentioned this a few times. You are never going to be forced to be sealed to somebody that you do not want to be sealed with, sealed to. But the sealing is both vertical and horizontal. And this and 
and the and the the ordinance and the covenant that you make within the ceiling is necessary for eternal life. So there will be no forcing anybody to live with who they don't want to live with. But I also throw this out, and this is not meant to just be just a simple whatever. We won't be sealed to anyone who is not a potential god or goddess, because that's what the celestial king, that's the highest level of the celestial kingdom leads us to become gods and goddesses, priests and priestesses. So there is never an eternal sealing to somebody who is not in that realm. And so by our own choice, we make the choice to be sealed to that person. We make the covenant and the covenant is what's staying. It's that ordinance with God, but we will not be forced to be with anyone. But at the same time, remember eternity is a long time. I'm just throwing all of that out. There are a lot of principles that we could talk to about, talk with about there, but, but people do change. If that is one thing of the gospel of Jesus Christ has taught us is that people do change. And so that's, that's not meant to be a stand on anything. It's just study the principles, follow the spirit. But there was, there have been a couple of great talks. In fact, I, I, I think I, I marked almost every time the word ceiling was there. And I think I marked it at least 40 times in these general conference talks. So I, those of you who are wondering about ceilings in your own personal life and choices that you're making in other people, et cetera, et cetera. My biggest invitation is go back and read these general conference talks and read the scriptures. And Elder Bed, I'll, I'll just throw this out here too. Elder Holland, if you want to look at this, I believe it was Peru, but I'm not sure. But if you just look at Elder Holland, a uh, talk about sealing, and he's talking about a couple and, and different ways of sealing. But if you want to learn more about principles related to sealing, just Google Elder Holland sealing. Um, it's, it's a translation from Spanish, but you can hear the whole thing. And he has a great explanation there as well. Anyway, that was kind of off key, but off topic. But thank you for the question, Helen. That was really good. Well, we've got the talk, the, the conference talk this time was about the degrees of glory again, a repeat, a reminder. Yep. So we'll, we'll be able to study a lot there as well about, about, about those things, those questions. I'm and, and, and Lee, please go, go ahead. Sorry, Elaine. No, I'm just excited. Go well, ahead. I am too. And I, and I think that's part of the, that's part of the joy of studying section 109 and 110 is that it puts us in a position to branch and study those things that are associated with it. With sealing keys, you can't have Elijah and not study sealing. Like you just, yeah, that's one of the beauties of all this is the things that are celestial are so tied into section 109 that you, you automatically will be studying the endowment. We're automatically going to be studying priesthood power. We, we're automatically going to be studying celestial kingdom and we're, we have to study the character of Christ. I mean, I just love the beginning of section 109 when, when the Lord introduces himself. And where do, you, where do you find a place that is so beautiful? And the Lord says, he, he, he says right off the bat exactly who he is. And then you see that in section 110 as well. I mean, we're going to be focusing on those things. Section 110, 110 is where he says, the veil was taken from our minds and the eyes of our understanding were opened. And I saw the Lord standing upon the breastplate of the pulpit before us. His feet were up. His feet was a paved work of pure gold and color like amber. And then this was President Nelson. His eyes were as a flame of fire. The hair of his head was white like the pure snow. His countenance shone above the brightness of the sun. And his voice was the sound of the rushing of the great waters, even the voice of Jehovah saying, I mean, and then he, he says this, I am the first and the last. I am he who liveth. I am he who was slain. I am your advocate with the father. Your sins are forgiven and you are clean. And then he lift up your heads and rejoice. I mean, welcome to the Kirtland Temple. <laughs> Just, Elaine, I was, I, I have to say this, and I, 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 in, in being positive, I was one time in the Kirtland Temple, which I've been to several times. I don't know that a year has gone by in the last, except for my mission, that I haven't gone to the Kirtland Temple. I, I love the Kirtland Temple, but I was in there one time and there was a young man who, who did a great job historically taking us to the Kirtland Temple, but maybe didn't quite understand that what I would say is like the power of the temple. And he made this comment where he said, you know, Sidney Rigdon spoke for like four hours. And then Joseph Smith, he was like, it was an all day meeting. And he was like, could you imagine how boring that meeting would have been to sit there all day? And my jaw dropped. I, I was like, are you, what I would give. <laughs> to have been in that meeting and sat there all day listening to this prayer section 109 listening and knowing of these experiences in section 110 i mean we all just sat through how many hours of conference we're used to this kind of stuff right we want to sit all day at the prophet's feet but that's what happened in kirtland i mean christ is introducing himself there and 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 throughout the whole kirtland area christ and the father are introducing themselves over and over and over again here in the temple 
but also right there in the in the Newell K. Whitney store in the School of the Prophets at the at the Isaac Morley farm. I mean, Christ and the Father are everywhere in Kirtland. It, it, this Kirtland temple is such a powerful symbol of the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's his church. It, it is, and, and aren't we blessed that the community of Christ Church has preserved that that edifice so well and it's been so just so kind to that edifice and now we have we have that in our possession and i i just feel a debt of gratitude to all who who've who've taken good care of that temple and the and the history that is is there it's just it, it is it's it's rather breathtaking it is. <laughs> Eli, so are we, we're studying 109 for next I think Monday is that we st I would say let's start 109. I will post it on Instagram so everybody will know. I think maybe Elaine, we could we could do President Nelson's talk. What if we started with President Nelson's talk again and really dissected it and tied that to section 109? What if we kind of planned on doing a little bit of both? Does that work? I okay. Love it. I love it. I, I want to throw this out too since you brought this. My last time going to the Kirtland Temple, I was actually I was actually with a Jewish uh, interfaith group. So it was myself, some of my colleagues at BYU, and then a Jewish interfaith group. I walked in and the person who was there to greet us didn't know that I was coming, but he's a dear friend. His name is Locke Mackay. He's Joseph Smith's great, great grandson. And he is a church historian for the community of Christ, for, for community of Christ church. And he walked us through the Kirtland temple and gave us a, gave us a tour of the Kirtland temple that I will never forget. He walked us through everything. He bore, you know, bore testimony of what he believed and his and his great great grandfather Joseph Smith. He talked about Emma. And he talked about their trials. And he took us to the very top and and the sacred areas where we see and have the revelation of Joseph Smith and and Joseph Smith Senior and and Alvin, and and it was a very very sacred moment to be in the Kirtland Temple and the very top of the Kirtland Temple, with with rabbis from the Jewish faith the great, great grandson of Joseph Smith and religion professors at BYU, all talking about the restoration of the gospel, the Jewish language, the gathering of Israel, all in the Kirtland temple. These, these three groups of people, it was, a, it was a memorable experience. I also am very grateful for the community of Christ and the leaders and the members there. Locke Mackay is a class act. And I'm grateful for the things that I have learned historically from those who have done such a great history of the community of Christ, church and temple. So. That all being said, I am very grateful that we belong to the true Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I'm grateful for the history and grateful that what's, for what's being done. But this is God's church. President Nelson, President, President Oaks, President Eyring. Let's see if I, we can do this. We can all say this together. President Holland, Elder, who, who's next? Elder, Elder Uchtdorf, Elder Cook, Elder Christofferson, Elder Anderson. Elder, somebody, I'm going to probably forget these because I'm, I'm live. Elder Razband, Elder Stevenson, Elder Renland, Elder, Elder Gong, Elder Suarez, and Elder Kieran. Did I miss one? I mean, Bednar. 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 Oh my goodness, Elder Bednar, I'm so sorry. <laughs> those men hold the keys of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Elder Renland, I missed those two right there. Those men hold the, gospel, the keys of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and this is his church, and this is a different church than any others. We're, we're not a humanitarian society. We're a, we're a let's save the souls and let's help each other be exalted society in God's work. So I love that, Barbara. I love that. I want to I just kind of end by sharing an experience in my testimony because after President Nelson spoke, well, kind of during his talk, uh, and as he announced the temples for sure, everyone around me was crying. The spirit that just was like a wave that came over us was unmistakable. And I, I just sat there in total awe. And, and after the conference was over, no one wanted to leave. But that spirit that I felt just again re-emphasized the fact that we are led by prophets of God and that these are the latter days and we are the latter day saints. And it re-emphasized to me how blessed we are, how blessed we are to know what we know and be able to do what we do and have temples dotting the earth, dotting the earth so that we can go there and find a strength and a refuge from the storms of this world and so we can help 
to prepare the earth for the Savior, Savior second coming. I am so grateful, and I was yesterday, and I am today, and I bear you my testimony that this is a wonderful thing that we're involved in, and the Savior is very near. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen Elaine. I'm, I'm going to, a, amen and amen. I'm, I'm going to share something too, and then I'll finish with this. Well, I'll, I'll read you this invite, another invite from President Nelson, and then I'm going to bear my testimony, Elaine, which is so similar to yours on this. Another thing that President Nelson invited us, he says, I invite you to consider carefully the following three statements, and we can talk about this next week as well. He says, the gathering of Israel is evidence that God loves all of his children everywhere. Two, the gospel of Abraham is further evidence that God loves all of his children everywhere. Interesting distinction, I think. He invites all to come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female. All are alike unto God. The sealing power is supernal evidence of how much God loves all of his children everywhere and wants each of them to choose to return to him. So I, as God is our father, this sealing power allows us to be sealed to this eternal family. It's not, it's, it's being sealed to each other is a huge part of that, but it's being sealed to him. It's being sealed as an eternal family, which is so powerful. He wants everyone back, no empty chairs. So I, I testify as well, Elaine, and um, I, don't, I don't know how to put this into words either, and this is not meant for anything but the reality of the testimony. At the end of that general conference talk as well with President Nelson, I don't know what, what caught me, but I could not hold back the tears. And I find, found myself weeping, and I can't explain it, except that I know that what President Nelson said was true and is true and that he is a prophet of God and that we really are bringing and preparing the second coming of Jesus Christ on this earth today, that the prophet has pled with the women of the church to be prepared and to be leaders, covenant leaders on this earth today and be able to speak up and speak out about these things that are most vital and most critical in this day of confusion. I, I felt so strongly this I don't even, I don't know how to explain the feeling I felt, except I can just simply testify that I know it was of God. And I know that he spoke to my soul and that these things that were taught at General Conference are absolutely, these, these things, these principles and doctrines and teachings that were taught at General Conference are truths of God. And I testify that we have priesthood keys on the earth today and we have a prophet who guides the use of these priesthood keys and the sealing power that we are promised is eternal. I, I am so excited to be able to continue this life of eternity with all of you. And I'm gen genuinely, I'm grateful to be on this path with Elaine and with every one of you and with many more, hopefully in the future that will continue to walk with us and walk with him as we eat of that fruit and experience this eternal joy. I, I am giddy beyond belief to have eternal joy. I, I, love, I love what the gospel does for me now and I'm so excited for everyone to have that joy throughout this world. Christ's coming allows eternal joy. So I simply testify again, Elaine, as you have, that this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is his true church. We have keys on the earth today. President Nelson is a prophet of God, and these 50 men hold these keys, and we have a divine responsibility as women and men in this church today as covenant keeping and making members of the church. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen, Barbara. It, it, but, it's an urgent matter. Everyone. It's an urgent matter. Again, for those of you who would like to join us we're going to be together on saturday the 13th in lehigh if you want to if you want to join the information's on the instagram account otherwise we will also see obviously there's not enough for everyone but we'll see most if not all of you next monday and we also invite you to bring other people invite other people to come and listen and be a part of this study section 109 and these teachings of the prophets this this is a, this is a game changer elaine right what's yeah. your what's, Pivot. what's the word you all that, that you like to use it's not monumental what is it Colossal. <laughs> this is colossal. Elaine, this is colossal. This is colossal, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We love, love you all. Love you, Barb. Love Thank you, Elaine. you. Thank Elaine. you. Goodbye, Bye -bye. everyone.